This set is one of the most amazing pieces of armor in the Wallace collection. One of three complete armors in the world. While the human armor has been refurbished, the, the horse armor is actually complete as it would have been made. Here's Thomas interviewing David Edge with the piece. So, can you tell us a little about when and where this was made? Yes, it's an armour that was made in southern Germany, in Landschut. Uh, there is, in fact, an armourer's mark on the chaffron, which is the, the headpiece of the horse. It is partly composite, so it wasn't all made in the same place necessarily at the same time. So the saddle, for example, is a little bit later. But comprehensively, the armour is about 1480, 1490. And armours of the 15th century are extremely rare. So this is one of only a handful of full 15th century Gothic armours in the world. And is this what a typical medieval knight would wear? This is the very, very, very top end. So I'm not sure if there was such a thing as a typical knight. Um, this is a, a, a knight who's pretty much made it to the top of the tree. Um, it was bought from Castle Hohenischau in the Austrian Tyrol. Um, and probably the elements of the armour, at least, um, had been there you know, ever since it was worn and used. Um, in which case, it would have been worn by Count von Freiburg, um, a very, very important nobleman in his era. Uh, so this was the, the absolute top of the tree. This was, if you like, the Ferrari um, of the, the, the early Renaissance, late Middle Ages. And this armour is extremely ornate. What is the significance of that to the wearer? Well, it's in the very, very tip-top of fashion for the late 15th century. Um, and that would explain its form. So, for example, you have these very long, pointy-toed sabatons, the sabaton being the, the shoe. Um, and this was exactly the same as the fashion for ordinary civilian shoes at court, um, very long, pointy toes. Um, Fashions change, of course. Armour, in a sense, is clothing, so it follows clothing fashions. And if we look at 1520 or 1530, just a few decades later, and there's some armours in the, the case over at the, the back here, um, showing exactly the same kind of armour, but the toes are blunt and sort of bare-pawed um, because they're following civilian fashion. That was the fashion for civilian shoes at that time. So we can see that this is in the very, very, very top echelon of armors. It's, it's following fashion very, very, very closely. And as you say, it's very ornate. All of this fluting, the cusped borders, this is absolute pure German Gothic fashion. How practical would this be for horse and rider on the battlefield? It is designed as a field armor. So it would impress, and you could certainly wear it in tournaments, or coronations, or grand parades, but you could also fight in it. So the armor for the, the man weighs 27 kilos. With that weight of armor, you can mount and dismount from the horse from the ground. No cranes or, or step ladders or anything. Um, and you could have total movement, total mobility wearing this armor. You could fall over and get up. You could even run. Not, I don't think, um, that he would do very much running. Um, but um, no, you, you'd have tremendous mobility. So in terms of a fighting man, yes, this is completely practical. It is designed for use on the field in war. Thank you very much for your time. If you'd like to see this magnificent piece of armour, or any other pieces of armour, please come down to the Wallace Collection at the European Armour Section. And if you'd like to know more about pieces at the Wallace Collection, watch out for some more podcasts.